this is Imagine and it is February 2012. This is a letter that um, I read and it's from Dave Kistler, the Vice President from the Faith and Freedom Institute and I wanted to share it with you all today. It's The title of the letter is, Could Our Real Enemy Be the Current Occupant of the White House? A word from the Evangelist Evangelist David Kistner of the Faith and Freedom Institute. Over the course of this afternoon and evening, I've had time to pursue the meaning of President Obama's compromise with the Catholic Church over contraception and its place in the health care. To put it bluntly, all he has done is rearrange the furniture on the deck of the Titanic. He, Obama, now says that it will be the responsibility of insurance companies to offer contraception and abortion services in their insurance plans. Well, excuse me, but this, since when is it the role of government, and especially that of a president, to tell a private insurance company what to do? What I am about to share with you, I've never put in print. I have shared it with individuals only. My friend Dr. Johnny Hunter, Executive Director of LEARN, the largest African-American pro-life organization in the nation, met our current president prior to his becoming president. During that encounter, Dr. Hunter was told the following by Obama, You black preachers are the scourge of America. I have absolutely no use for you." Unquote. There were additional profanities laced comments that Senator Obama made to Dr. Hunter that I cannot repeat here. Dr. Hunter's statement to those of us in the room the day we were told this was, Gentlemen, I saw the devil with his tail out. This man, Obama, is not our friend. There were other almost prophetic statements that Dr. Hunter shared with us, all of which has proven true over the last two and a half years. The bottom line is this. What our pres president has done is declare on all our, an all-out war against our freedom of religion rights. That is not an overstatement. Whether he has doubts about his ability to be re-elected or whether he doesn't fear the American electorate or a combination of both, the simple fact is this. He has decided to go full tilt toward denying our First Amendment rights. Pastors, I beg you to consider addressing the, this issue with your congregation. Our Catholic counterparts nationwide read a letter in their pulpits this past Sunday to the rousing applause of their congregations stating Catholic that they would not violate their beliefs and conscience. Again, we have large disagreements with the Catholics doctrinally. However, we are in this battle together. It is not just Catholics whose First Amendment rights are being trampled. We who call ourselves fundamentalists, evangelicals, or whatever label we choose are directly affected as well. To be completely honest, I've seen this coming for three years. I've tried to sound periodic alarms. Some have listened, some have not. I hope that now you understand the enemy we face. Our enemy is the current occupant of the White House. Strong language? You bet. I say it because it's true. Never have we had a president who has done what this man is doing. Never have we seen the egregious violations of the Constitution like we are witnessing at the hands of this man we call President. I say again, my dear pastor friends, for the cause of freedom and the gospel, please consider addressing this issue kindly and directly with your congregation. If you are unaware of what is being transpiring, I don't know how you could be, 
then educate yourself on this issue. This has absolutely nothing to do with politics. This has to do with saving our republic and our free speech and our religious rights. If we fear and fail here, we will one day look back and rue the squandered op opportunity we had to stand up and speak out. While we still have the freedom to contest the anti-God, anti-constitutional, anti-liberty lunacy that is the Obama administration, we must do so. Earlier this evening, I heard one evangelical woman put it this way. We will fight this constitutional infringement in our institutions, in our pulpits, and in the streets if need be. I share her sentiments. I know that some will consider this extreme. You may do so at your own peril. I am not going to look back with any regrets on this. I will not sit in a jail one day for my faith and not be assured that I did all I could to protest and preserve liberty. This was the attitude as well as the action of our founders. I have absolutely no respect for the freedom living individual who is not freedom loving enough to do all he or she can to pass on this incredible gift called liberty to our future generations. It was passed to us through the blood of patriots. Do we think that we are too privileged, too special, too secure, that the same won't be required of us? This is our time. This is our moment. This is our time for seriously, for protecting and preserving the precious seed of our liberty. If we will not stand for our freedom now, I seriously doubt our willingness to stand when we are told we must violate our conscience to obey a tyrannical government. I just heard one gravely concerned religious leader say, This is not about being willing to go to jail. This is about being willing to die for what we believe. Friends, he is 100% right. This is exactly what this is. And this is exactly where we are. Now let's do what is right, not convenient. Let's be willing, as were our founders, to mutually pledge our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Yours for Faith and Freedom, Dave Kistler, Vice President, the Faith and Freedom Institute. Well, my opinion on this letter is it's a great one, and it's better late than never.